called them parking lot moments. And after he explained to me what a parking lot moment was, it changed the way I see church and faith and even Jesus in a slightly different way. My first call was to a church in Lancaster, Ohio, and that was about 17 years ago. And in that church, we had a radio program, and we would record every service, and then our technicians would edit it down to a, a half-hour program, which generally usually consisted of my sermon, a hymn, and the Lord's Prayer. And then they would send it to the radio station, who would play it the following Sunday. So every Sunday morning, we were on the radio. And a couple years into that, I was asked by the Chamber of Commerce to say a blessing as they dedicated and opened a new business downtown. And the president of the chamber introduced me, and I prayed the prayer, and they cut the ribbon and, and all of that. And then this gentleman that I'd never seen before walked up to me, and he said, Pastor Karen, my wife and I have been wanting to meet you for many months now. He said, we are Methodists, and he said, we're, we're not going to change that. He said, um, my family has been at the Methodist Church for generations, in fact, far enough back that we were one of the founding families. He said, so I'm not going to leave our Methodist Church, he said, but I want you to know how much you and your ministry has impacted our faith life. He said, every Sunday after church, we go to the, to the Chinese buffet to meet my in-laws for lunch. And he said, one Sunday on our way driving across town, my wife was pushing buttons trying to find a radio station and we happened across your sermon and he said and it was about in the middle of your sermon but he said something that you said captured both of us and so we left it on the station and we finished listening to your sermon he said and now we listen to you every week he said what we have found is that if we don't stand in line to shake our pastor's hand on the way out the door every Sunday if we instead slide out through the slide door quickly we can get to our car and get it started just as your sermon starts. He said, and then we drive across town, and he said, and we park, but my in-laws now know that we are not coming in until your sermon is finished. So they sit in the parking lot and listen to the rest of my sermon. And he said, you've changed our faith life. He said, I've always been a believer. I've always went to church. He said, but there's something about the way you bring the gospel alive and you, you make it so easy to understand. And he said, and what you've done for me is that you help me see that Jesus isn't in the past. That not only, and he's not in the future, he's in the present. He said, I've always thought of Jesus and, as, and God as, as somebody who acted years ago and and who will act again in the future when the world ends, he said, I, I never gave much thought to him being present today. And I got to thinking, and I've thought about that conversation so many times. Uh, one, because it is mind-boggling to me to think that somebody sneaks out of church and tries to get to their car in a hurry to listen to me. That is just mind-boggling. I mean, it boggles my mind to even 17 years into this journey to, to realize that people actually like you are listening to me voluntarily and that God uses me and my mouth to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's mind boggling to me. But the fact that somebody would sneak out of their church and sit in the parking lot really boggles my mind. But you know what else I find mind boggling? I've thought so much about this over the last 17 years and he's right. I, and as I got honest with him, I, there was a part of me, I think, that, that fed into the same routine that he did. You see, before Jesus, after his death and resurrection, and, and before he ascended back into heaven, he, he had a conversation with his disciples, and he told them that he was going away. And he said, I will send the advocate, the Holy Spirit, to be with you. And unless I leave, he cannot come. Well, actually, the Holy Spirit is a she in Scripture. Unless I leave, she, not, she cannot come. So what that means was, when we were reading scripture, the New Testament took place about those events, those stories that we're reading in the New Testament, took place over 2,000 years ago. Jesus walked on the earth over 2,000 years ago. And, and we're reading these stories 
from long ago that took place in a land most of us have never visited and at a time and in a society that is so different from ours it's not even funny. And so it's easy to fall into this trap as seeing Jesus Christ as history. But he's not. You know, at that time, Jesus walked the earth. He could only be in one place at one time. So that means if he and a group of disciples were in the upper room having dinner, and another group of disciples were out in the garden, he could only be with one group of disciples at the same time. But because he left, because he went back to the Father, and they sent the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can be everywhere and is everywhere, which means the Holy Spirit is with you right now, with me right now, and it's mind-boggling to think about the Spirit being in all places at all times and helping everyone. You know, we all have parking lot moments. We just may not be aware of them. Parking lot moments are, are those times when, we, you know how you've been driving down the road and a song, your, a song you love comes on and you're jamming and you're singing and you get to where you're going but you don't stop, the, you don't turn off the car so you can finish listening to the song and singing the song? Or maybe you're listening to a podcast or an NPR um, interview or program and you're really into it, it's really captured you and you get to where you're going, whether it be the parking lot of, of where you're headed or maybe your own driveway, and you sit and you listen to it and you finish it. And those parking lot moments are moments that something outside of us captured us and our attention. Jesus is like that. The Holy Spirit is like that. You see, the Holy Spirit breaks into our lives every day. But we often miss them because we're not looking for them. And because subconsciously, we're just not aware that he's really, she, the Holy Spirit, she, is really here with us. I have a woman that I see almost every day of the week, and her faith is mind-boggling. Her faith inspires me. And she came to my office one day, and she had tears in her eyes, and she said, Karen, the most wonderful thing just happened. She said, I was outside, and she said, and I was praying. I've been praying for you because I know you've been struggling. And she said, and I looked over at your church, and she said, and at the moment I stopped praying, she said, and you're going to think I'm crazy, she said, but at the moment I stopped praying, the clouds parted, and this beam of sunshine shone down upon the steeple of your church, and I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit, and I knew the Spirit was telling me, you're going to be okay. And that the Spirit is with you. She sees things like that a lot. And her faith boggles my mind. So what I'd like for each of us to do going forward this week is to start paying attention to our own parking lot moments. Those moments where something outside of us, whether it's a song, an interview that we're listening to, a TV show, a movie, um, a book that we're reading, and you know, and it doesn't have to always be Christ Christian or religious. God, speak, God has spoken to me through ACDC, and that's mind-boggling. But God can and does use everything because the Spirit is everywhere. So here today, I want you to know that the presence of God here on earth is not past tense, it is not present tense. It is past, it's not future tense, it's past, present, and future. Do you get it? I mean, it's just so exciting. So, go this week. Pay attention to those parking lot moments when the Spirit breaks into your life. Amen.